So 21, we have y is less than x plus 3. Now, we talked about these one day in class. <coughs> when you're graphing inequalities, just graph it like a regular equation. We have to graph a boundary line. We have to decide if it's opened or closed. And then we have shading involved. So if we want y less than x plus 3, this is in slope-intercept form, which is great. I'm just going to graph it using slope-intercept form. So my intercept is 3. So I go to my graph, 1, 2, 3, plot my intercept. And then my slope is 1. Let's see here. My slope is 1 or 1 over 1. So I would go from the point up 1, right 1, which will land me about right here. And then I draw my line. Now is it a dashed line or a solid line? Solid line. So for a solid line, I'm going to have to, this is probably going to, or no, for a dash, no, this is a, a dashed line because it's open. This isn't going to be the best line. Your line will look better than mine. It's a dash line. Dash line because it's open, it's not equal to. It's like before when we were doing brackets and parentheses. <coughs> we would do parentheses if it wasn't equal to. How do we show like a parentheses on a, on a line? We do dashed. If it's less than or equal to, we would have done a solid line. So because it's open, it's a dash line. Open, dash line. Now we have shading involved, just like we have, you know, in, in our other inequality problems that we've done. The question is, how do you know which side to shade? Either like this bottom right or the upper left. My lines divided my axes into, you know, two parts. Which side gets shaded? And this is where you could test a point. And the easiest point to test, I think, is the origin at 0, 0. If we test 0, 0, what that means is plug 0, 0 into my original inequality and see if it gives me a true or false statement. So is 0 less than, oops, 0 plus 3? That is the question. So 0 less than 0 plus 3 is 3. Is that true or false? That is definitely true. What that means is my point zero zero is on the true side, and the true side always gets shaded. So this side of my line is the shaded side. Remember when we did that? Is it coming back to you maybe? Hopefully. Okay, so my system is x plus y less than or equal to 9 and x minus y less than or equal to 10. So I'm going to have to graph these individually. And then they'll, they'll both be solid because they both have the equal to part. So they'll both be solid. And then I'll have to shade both of them. Now I wrote them side by side like this because... The first thing I want to do is put them both into slope-intercept form so I can graph them a little bit easier. So the one on the left, x plus y less than or equal to 9, I just have to get y by itself. So I'm going to move my x term. Oops. And that's going to give me y is less plus 9. And I'll go ahead and solve the other one while I'm at it. So I have to move that x term as well. But this one is a little bit trickier because i got to divide everything by negative 1.
because because it's yeah because it's a negative y, and we got to have y by itself. And because I divided by a negative one, I have to reverse my inequality symbol. So my new system, if I convert everything to slope-intercept form, is y less than or equal to negative x plus nine, and y greater than or equal to x minus ten. And now I can graph them. So I'm going to graph the one with the 9 first. That intercept is at positive 9, which ends up being right here. Oops. Okay. And then my slope, I'm sorry? Positive 9. So I am on not, I'm at 9 on my y-axis. My slope is negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1, which is going to put me about right here. Oops. Because there's the, the m is negative 1. The number in front of my x is negative 1. And it's a solid line. Because it's down one, it's down one, right one. Because remember, slope is rise over run. So since slope, since my slope is negative one, that's negative one over one, so that means I go down one, right one. negative one over one. So I have to go down one, right one. Because the negative one tells me to go down and the positive one tells me to go to the right. And let's go ahead and do the shading while we're here. And again, I like to shade or I like to test my point zero, zero. It's the easiest one to test. If I plug in zero, zero into my original inequality is it true or false? True. It is true. So what that tells me is zero zeros on the true side. And so all of that gets shaded. <clears throat> Remember in my math lab you get to use that little paint bucket. And now <clears throat> I'm going to graph my other one, the one with the 10 in it. Now, my intercept is negative 10. <coughs> I can't quite get down there to the negative 10. Okay, so it's down here at the bottom. And then my slope on this one is positive one, so I get to go up one, right one. So, somewhere around in there, just up one, right one. And then my line is solid. So there's my solid line. And then if I test 0, 0 in this inequality, if I plug in 0, oops, 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 10. So I get 0 greater than or equal to negative 10. Is that true or false? That's true as well. So this also gets shaded on the 0, 0 side. So it's kind of hard to see, but my two lines cut my coordinate plane into four parts. I have kind of this 
little triangular piece over here to the far right. I have this kind of bottom right. I have this <coughs> upper right area. And then I have this big kind of left side. My answers are where the shadings overlap. So all of this over here would get the paint bucket. This section would be left white, this section's left white, this section's left white. This would get the bucket. Because that's where your shadings overlap. Okay. 